A very difficult stretch to the All-Star break that started with a challenging road trip through Atlanta and St. Louis has turned into a springboard to the summer. The bats and arms have joined together and have one last chance to shy before heading east for a very important homestands. Even the biggest baseball optimist couldn't have envisioned what the Phillies have done on this road trip so far. They enter play today, the final day of this seven-day road trip, with a 5-1 and one record against the Braves and the Cardinals. The crowd's filing in for a little day baseball here in St. Louis. And now the numbers dictate success for the Phillies across the board on this road trip. Five wins, 31-14. to 14. That's what they've outscored the opponent on this road trip the bullpen outstanding the starters have gone deep into games and of course overall the Phillies hitting 274. Hi everybody I'm Tom McCarthy joined by Jamie Moyer this has been a great road trip for the Phillies we've talked about it over the last several days you can point to every facet of the game but I think it all starts like a lot of success does with the starting pitching. It does start with the starting pitching and I think the Phillies have proved that now to themselves. Their starters over the course of this road trip have averaged over seven innings per start. And through this graphic, you'll see a lot of positives from the starting rotation. And hopefully they can build off of this with the good defense that they've been able to support their pitchers, but with and also the great offense that's really kind of come to light. Yeah, even you look at Roberto Hernandez, six innings, five earned runs against the Braves, but he really battled to get through those six innings and give the Phillies a chance to win. Now, yesterday, Cole Hamels for the second time of this road trip was outstanding. He fought through some some trouble spots that it wasn't until late in the game when he faced Matt Holliday that he really fell off the brink. Yeah, Cole again didn't have his best stuff yesterday but figured out a way to get through seven innings, seven plus innings. And really, he, you know, we've seen him at times didn't not having his best stuff and struggling a little bit. Here yesterday, he didn't have his best stuff and, and got through the seven innings, as I said, but right there made a mistake to Halliday, and really that double was the turning point of the game. Halliday was uh, expecting a changeup that was down in the dirt. He got one up for the strike zone, and he didn't miss it. Now, he's had himself a heck of a career. just picked up his 1,000th RBI. Yeah, Matt Halliday has had a very steady career, and he's been a very solid player in the outfield. But even more importantly, as an offensive player, he's really done a lot of good things. He's got a lot of home runs. He seems to always come up in the key situations. And the more he's given the opportunity to face a, a pitcher, I think the tougher he becomes. Well, and this was a transition time for the St. Louis Cardinals. He used to support Albert Pujols. Now he supports a lot of these young hitters for the St. Louis Cardinals. So it is the final day of this road trip for the Phils. Kyle Kendrick on the mound for the Phillies. And Carlos Martinez making his second straight spot start for the St. Louis Cardinals. And speaking of Kyle Kendrick, well, he's won back-to-back -back games. That's been huge for the Phillies. When we return, we'll talk about Kyle, who does like to pitch here at Bush Stadium. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Citizens Bank. Introducing one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. By Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. By Budweiser. A reminder from Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Designated driver. By Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. And by Independence Blue Cross. The most preferred health plan in the region. Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless.
This afternoon in St. Louis, a lot of stuff going on in the sports world, including game four between the Phillies and the St. Louis Cardinals. You know, there's certain guys that pitch well in certain places, and Kyle Kendrick, today's starting pitcher for the Phillies, just seems to pitch very well here in St. Louis. Back in 2012, Jamie, he had what I thought was one of his best ever outings on the mound. Yeah, his first career complete game shutout was here in St. Louis in 2012, and you're going to see some highlights here. And from this game, again, you'll see a lot of good execution down, balls running off the plate, but these are all pitches that are looking like strikes, some of them staying in the strike zone with movement, but the ones that aren't in the strike zone cross the plate as strikes, and really caught the hitters, I felt, off guard. And, and I think that's what makes Kyle so special. Right there is a, a backdoor sinker for strike three to end the game. That's what makes Kyle so special, and this is what allows him to have his success. Yeah, the two-seamer, which I think has become a bread-and-butter pitch for him, was very effective that day. Now, look at the numbers here in St. Louis, a 2.89 ERA. Yeah, and that's what, again, where Kyle has to pitch. And that tells you, too, he's forcing that defense, or excuse me, forcing the offense to hit the ball on the ground, allowing his defense to play behind him. And that's where Kyle is going to have most of his success. And that's what we saw in his previous outing against Atlanta. And that's what he needs to bring in today, into today's game as well. All right. Well, speaking of Kyle Kendrick, Murph got a chance to catch up with the Phillies starting pitcher. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Yeah, here with Kyle Kendrick, uh, who will pitch the final game of this road trip. And uh, it's been a pretty good road trip so far. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let's talk about uh, your last start uh, against Atlanta, ar arguably your best of the season so far. What was working so well uh, against the Braves that night? I think just uh, I was down, uh, attacking, attacking the zone, getting ahead. Um, the biggest thing for me is just uh, you know strike one and being down. I think uh, I did that pretty well last start. And just got to carry it into uh, to the next one. There was so much talk about uh, you know getting through those early innings for you, and you talked about maybe changing things up before that start, doing something different before you got out there on the mound for the first inning. Did you do that? Yeah, I went out there a little earlier and uh, <clears throat> just started my, my warm-up stuff uh, earlier than, than normal. Um, I threw um, like a first inning, and then I sat down for about 10, 15 minutes and went from the windup. And, um, also, I think the weather helped. You know, I like pitching in the heat. Uh, it gets me a little looser. But, you know, I, I think what really comes down to, like I said, is just, you know, being, making quality pitches and getting ahead for me. Well, you'll get the heat uh, in St. Louis, no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, I was talking to A.J. after his start, uh, after his win here in uh, St. Louis, and I asked him about uh, the friendly competition between the starters and how y you all kind of thrive off of one another, and that really seems to be what is happening right now. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, definitely. I think it started with Cole, um, you know, in the role he's been on. And, uh, you know, nobody... Uh, None of us five guys want to be that that weak link. So um, you just try to you know push each other. And like I said, I think it started with Cole. We just kind of you know went from there. Can that kind of thing uh, also translate to the bullpen because those guys have been you know equally as good? Uh, definitely, for sure. You know they've uh, like you said they've been throwing well. A lot of young good arms you know coming out of there. And I think confidence is going to be big for them. If they can go out there and keep putting up zeros, and um, they'll just grow from there. You know, when, when the team was struggling, uh, there was a lot of talk about having to, you know, get on a little bit of a run and, and get the confidence maybe back in, inside that clubhouse. It seems that uh, you guys have done that uh, at the end of that road, or at the end of the homestand on this road trip. Is there a different feel right now inside the clubhouse? Yeah, I think uh, everyone's confidence is pretty high. I mean, we're winning games, uh, putting a little winning streak together. That's always good. Guys are coming to the park, you know, feeling like we have a good chance of winning. Uh, and that's, I think it starts... You know, with pitching, if we can keep putting up zeros and keeping our team in the game, we're going to score some runs. And we've been doing that, um, and the bullpen's been doing their their stuff. I think everyone just has to, you know, worry about themselves and take care of their jobs, and that's how you win games. Too early to start looking at the uh, the standings. Yeah, it's too early for that. Uh, we we know where we're at. Um, you know, we definitely know where we're at. We just got to keep doing what we're doing right now. Keep taking care of business. Well, you'll get a chance to do that here in St. Louis, Kyle. Thanks for your time, Tom. Let's send it back upstairs to you. All right, Murph, thank you very much. We appreciate that. When we return, we'll go to the Comcast Sportsnet Studios. One of the other storylines here this afternoon is Jimmy Rollins, who has a 15-game hitting streak on the line.
uh, some offensive support here this afternoon. Let's take a look at the Phillies starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Ben Revere's back in the starting lineup. He'll be followed by Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley. Ryan Howard is the cleanup hitter. Then John Mayberry and Dominic Brown in the bottom third of Cody Ashey, Cameron Rupp making his first major league start of the season, and Kyle Kendrick. And they'll face 22-year-old uh, right-hander Carlos Martinez, who's making his second start of the year, second spot start, 0-3 with an ERA of 4.19. And, you know, Jamie, sometimes uh, this kid can be lights out. Other times uh, he struggles with his secondary pitches. Yeah, he's got a big arm. <clears throat> you can see a 97-mile-an-hour fastball with a pretty good curveball. Beyond that, you know, the sliders, he has one, but he doesn't really have command of it. And a changeup that he throws, I think, a little reluctantly. Well, here is the Budweiser scouting report. Made 12 postseason appearances last season for the Cardinals. Yeah. He's got a big arm, and I think that's what uh, they're really. The Cardinals are really excited about. Now it's a matter of trying to de to develop that arm. Ben Revere hitting 280 on the season. He dribbles one to the right, and Martinez will throw him out. So one away, one quick out here in the first. And that'll bring Jimmy Rollins to the plate. Okay, it's time now for our Nissan keys of the game. And uh, the first key today is uh, being patient um, and get to Garcia or Martinez's fastball and uh, end the trip with a W. Make this trip uh, a, a, a great trip and bring hopefully uh, some, some winning uh, energy home to Philadelphia. Yeah, the Phillies have struggled at home, but if they win here today, they'd be 6 and 1 on this road trip. Jimmy Rollins is three for 12 in the series. He's hit in 15 straight games. And he has just one hit in each of those 15 games. It's the longest stretch in baseball of this variety since Ted Sizemore did it with the Cardinals. Sizemore had a single hit in 16 straight games. And Rollins rips one over to right field, and it's going to be tracked down by Alan Craig. That's one of the better balls he's hit this series. Two outs here in the first. I think when you're facing a guy like Martinez where you know you're going to get a lot of fastballs you can sit on pitches or on his fastball and look to pull it a little bit more or you know if you choose to use the bigger part of the diamond you know, try to hit the ball back through the middle. Chase Utley hitting 304 five home runs and 33 runs batted in. Utley also has three hits in this series. I should say four hits in the series with a couple runs scored. Take strike one, it's 0 and 1. Chase has reached base safely in this stadium in 25 straight games. All 25 the Phillies have played here during the regular season since it opened. He's reached base, or all 25 that he's played in. Ball one strike to Udley. That's a fastball yeah. at the knees at 98 miles an hour. It's one and two. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Sally Kapler of Glassboro. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, and Sally, you'll win two hundred dollars. Here's hoping you do. Change up, hit foul, and it stays two balls and two strikes. Overall, on this road trip, Utley is seven for twenty-two. He's hit in five straight games. There was a point during this road trip where his batting average dipped under three hundred. Just for a moment, and then it jumped back up. Well, that fastball is at 99 miles an hour. If you got it, use it. Right? Well, there's been this debate from a Cardinal standpoint as to whether to keep this guy up here as a long man or a relief pitcher or send him down to AAA and stretch him out to be a starting pitcher. I think he signed in 2010 as a free agent with, with the Cardinals. And, uh, oh, Three or four years later, he's in the big leagues. 
He's a young kid with a great arm. Well, you just saw Michael Waka. That's who he's starting for today. Waka was scheduled to start today's ball game, but they've decided to give him a few extra days. He'll start the next time through the rotation. 2 2 pitch to Utley. Ground ball foul. Well, Jimmy, you mentioned that Martinez was signed by the Cardinals in 2010. He was originally signed by the Boston Red Sox. He went by the name Carlos Matias when he signed a $160,000 contract with the Red Sox to be a shortstop. Then, after Major League Baseball did its investigations, background checks, they realized that he was not Carlos Matias. That ball is hit out toward left center field. That holiday is there, makes the catch. Side is retired. Anyway, a year later, as Carlos Martinez. He signed with the Cardinals for one point five million dollars and he was no longer a shortstop. We'll go to the bottom of the first since the Phillies nothing and the Cardinals coming up. Lineup for today brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Matt Carpenter leads it off at third. Matt Holiday, Matt second and left. Matt Adams is over at first base, he'll hit third. And then they mix it up a little bit because Alan Craig is in right field batting cleanup. Yadier Molina will be the catcher batting fifth. Batting six is John Jay. Johnny Peralta, the shortstop, hits seven. Mark Ellis bats eighth and batting ninth in pitching, of course, is Martinez. And yeah, they'll face Phillies right hander Kyle Kendrick. Three and six on the year, but he's one back to back starts. Certain run average has dipped under four. It's at 3.97. And things have been better for Kyle over his last couple of outings. Yeah, Kyle's uh, actually been better because he's made a couple of simple adjustments and he's been able to keep the ball down and not make the mistakes up. We're going to see uh, a fastball to a sinking fastball by 89, a curveball at about 76, a cutter around 87, and a change up at 81. With uh, these are our Budweiser scouting report. First pitch to Matt Carpenter is in there for strike. It's 0 1. Carpenter hitting 281, three home runs, 27 runs batted in. He's two for six lifetime against Kendrick. Inside, 1 and 1. Little different look today behind the plate. Cameron Rupp is the catcher this afternoon. Will Nieves is still battling uh, uh, the cramp in his quad that he sustained in Atlanta. Ryan Sandberg was saying today that it, it could still force Nieves to go on the disabled list because he just can't get back to 100%. But they'll wait and see how it is in the next day or so. He can hit if they need him, but he just can't run or catch. Change up outside, three and one. Carlos Ruiz, of course, uh, behind the plate yesterday, getting today off. We'll be back behind the plate tomorrow. Towards second to his left, Utley. And Matt 
Matt Holiday is coming up. One of the reasons why Kyle had success in his last couple starts is that he's limited the damage in the first inning. Prior to that, he was not limiting the damage in the first inning. Yeah, he had uh, what, 10 11 starts in a row where he gave up at least one run in the first inning. And uh, last uh, start in Atlanta, he actually got a guy on, got a big double play, and got out of that first inning, and it's pretty much smooth sailing from there. Matt Holiday, the hero in yesterday's ball game. He had a changeup from Cole Hamels into the alley in left center field that broke a 1 1 tie. Carlos Ruiz uh, had gone out to the mound to talk to Cole Hamels, and he said, uh, Listen, Holiday's swinging pretty freely right now. Throw me a change up in the dirt. Well, the change up was up in the zone instead of in the dirt. And Holiday was able to get to it. He got to it, he did. He hit it pretty well right through the left center field gap. One ball, one strike to Holiday. Now it's two and one. Mike Mathidis jumbled his lineup up there today. It's the first time Holiday's batted second in a game since 2010. Fly ball to left field. Not deep, playable for Brown. And that'll bring Matt Adams to the plate. During the 2014 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory. And five cents for each card to Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. All right, so you're getting back tonight. You're going to get in the car and drive right to your uh, local Wawa to get some Turkey Hill ice cream. You got a hanker it for it? I have on the road trip. It's a possibility. <laughs> Matt Adams takes a strike. It's 0 1. We could get you to be a spokesperson for them or something. <laughs> Get you out to the factory. Put a hairnet on you. That would work. I may not come back. You may not come back, or you probably come back a little larger. One ball and one strike to Matt Adams. Adams sitting 318, six home runs, 25 RBIs. The ball's ripped foul. That's what you can do, Jamie. You can come up with your own flavor. That would be fun. Get your name in there somehow, like make it sort of a rhyme with your name. I don't know what we would be able to do with that though. Well, they used to call you and dug out the old man. One of them. That was one of them. Yeah. Maybe you could make a play off that. One two pitch. Out of play. To think about that. I think that you put all your favorite ingredients in there, in there although you've been. Sort of mixing it up a little bit. Cookies and cream is your favorite, right? Oh, actually, chocolate chip. Oh, right, favorite. chocolate chip. Vanilla or chocolate ice cream? Vanilla. All right. You can do a lot more things with vanilla, I think, than you can with chocolate. Outside, two and two. I like where this conversation's going, Tom. <laughs> we may have to finish on the plane, though. We've got a baseball game out here. <laughs> Two balls and two strikes. Long game, Jamie. Long game. Phillies are playing Adams to pull. Swing and a miss. He got him with a changeup. Boy, good pitch selection right there by Kendrick and Cameron Ruff. Side is retired in order here in the bottom of the first. We've completed our first inning here in St. Louis. Kyle Kendrick picked up his first strikeout along the way. We'll go to the second.
Miami Marlins and prior to the ball game a tribute to Jimmy Rollins fans are invited to get to their seats at about 645 uh, for the ceremonies a lot of surprise guests coming into town. It's also the final Hatfield dollar dog night scheduled for 2014. It's a four game series all four games are at 705 you can go to Phillies.com and purchase your tickets. Go to the second inning Brian Howard John Mayberry and Dominic Brown will be the hitters. Howard is eight for 26 on this road trip. Although he's hit a little bit of a speed bump here uh, in this Cardinal series he's old for his last eight. So had a lot of trouble yesterday with Adam Wainwright's curveball which a lot of people were having trouble with Adam Wainwright's curveball yesterday. Well, that's Adam's M.O. and that's his out pitch. He can do so many things with that curveball. You see why hitters have problems with it because he has the ability to throw it in the dirt with two strikes. He can backdoor it. He can throw it short in front of the plate. He can throw it down and into the left handed hitter. He can throw it off the right handed hitter's hip. Um, plus he has such a wide array of other pitches. Whereas today, you know, with Martinez here, you're going to see a steady diet of fastballs, and you're going to see him all around the zone. Two balls, two strikes to Howard. Now three and two. And I see a great fastball from Martinez, but he like said he's missed some balls way off the plate away. Um, and a couple of balls in. I don't see him. Repeating his mechanics consistently, especially on that miss away from the left handed hitter. It's almost like he's falling towards first base as he's throwing. That one got a piece of Yadier Molina. And it stays full three and two. You can see him falling off here. He lands and he spins off on that front side. There's, there's a lot of uh, power that he generates here. That one, he fights off and spins it down the third base line, and Howard's got a base hit. That finishes up the 0 for 8. And for Howard, it's his fourth hit of the series. Tomorrow night on Comcast Sportsnet, watch as surprise guests honor Jimmy Rollins at a pregame celebration, then watch the Phillies take on the Marlins in game one of a four game set. That's tomorrow at 6.30 on Comcast Sports. John Mayberry will be the batter. Mayberry playing right field today for Marlon Bird. Ryan Sandberg said that it was time to get Marlon off his feet again. And Mayberry, he felt, was swinging a pretty good bat. Two for 11 on the, in the series so far. John's mom and dad again this morning. And they were excited to get about the chance to get to see their son play again. Yeah. One ball and one strike to Mayberry. Hitting 316 in his last 24 games. Which includes some success at the plate as a pitch hitter. Coming in and nails Mayberry. That's that fastball I was talking about to the lefty that was running off the plate. Unfortunately, there was a right hander in the box and that ball ran right into him. Here's a, you see that tailing fastball catches him, looks like it catches him on the inside of the thigh. Now Mayberry takes his spot over at first, Howard's at second, so the Phillies have two on with nobody out. Left-handed hitting Dominic Brown will be the batter. Lefties are hitting 295 against Martinez. Brown takes outside, 1 0. I mean, here's a kid just firing the ball. Just I mean, it, it yep. really it looks like there's no method to this madness at this point. Great arm.
I mean, to me, he looks like he's a relief pitcher out there starting a game. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah. yeah. I wonder what he was like from shortstop before he became a pitcher. Well, he must have had a great <laughs> arm. It's an interesting story because you know the Red Sox they got him for what would be termed a bargain at one hundred sixty thousand dollars when they thought he was a seventeen year old from Porto uh, Playa Dominican Republic. Inside three and zero. Oh. But once the investigation from Major League Baseball began uh, and they realized that he wasn't uh, who he said he was and he was a year older he wasn't 17 he was 18. The Red Sox wanted him to still honor the contract. But it was voided. There's ball four and the bases are loaded. Now the Toyota Major League scoreboard the Mets are on top of the Marlins seven nothing that games in the top of the fifth inning. Daniel Murphy has three RBIs. Phillies will see the Marlins who have lost seven of ten. Phillies will see them beginning tomorrow. Where the standings are right now, the Phillies are four games out in the East, and they are two and a half behind the Marlins for third place. As you see, Derek Lilquist out with Yadier Molina talking to Martinez. Spot here for the Phils to open it up and get the early lead. Well, here's a nice little tidbit for you average fastball in Major League Baseball since 2013. Chapman's at 98.4, Rosenthal's at 97.1, and this kid Martinez is at 96.8 with Kimbrell. Oh, and tied with Kimbrell at 96.8. It's, uh, he's up top uh, top three. Well, that's one of the reasons why he was used so much in the postseason last year. Even though he was 21 years of age, he certainly had the ability to strike guys out. What an O to Cody Ashy with the bases loaded. Now it's yeah. ooh, ball and one strike. Mm. That's where you'd bark out from the dugout. I would think, hey, don't help him out. It almost looked like it was in the other batter's box. Sure did. Angel Campos is the home plate umpire. Larry Van over the crew chiefs at third. Now toward left center field. On the run is Jay. He's not going to get it. It's going to roll toward the track. Cut off by Holiday. Three runs are going to score. Cody Ashey is at second base. A three run double. And the Phillies take the early lead. Double number nine for Cody Ashey. He now has 21 runs batted in. He did a nice job. That pitch was out toward the outer edge of the plate, and he just went with it. He did a great job. And here again, you got a guy that's throwing this hard. It doesn't, you don't really need a big swing. You just need to get the barrel of the bat to the ball, and that's exactly what Cody did and drove it through the left center field gap. And wow, did you see John Mayberry take off from first base? That's a good swing right there. John Mayberry was on. Uh, Dominic Brown's tail between second and third. You knew he was going to score on that double. That's a great hustle. Well, now Cameron Rupp with a runner at second. And the first pitch is inside, 1 0. Three run double. Cameron Ruff was hitting just 167 down in AAA, but he had six home runs and 18 runs batted in. A little disappointing batting average wise. He certainly has some pop though. Is that one foul toward Kendrick? And it's one ball and two strikes. Kyle on deck. Well, 
there's that slider and that's where the trouble sometimes occurs for Martinez that pitch was up. Cameron just fouled it off. Chopper left side as she reads it well he'll go to third. And Rupp is retired. One man down, 5 3 on the putout to get Cameron Rupp. And Kyle Kendrick will be the hitter. Kyle taking a long look over at Pete McCannon in the third base coach's box. The Cardinals are going to play the infield in. You have Revere on deck. Pitchers have done their job during the series for the Phillies. At least AJ Burnett and Cole Hamels have. Swing and a miss. So and one. 99 on that fastball. He wondered about a squeeze in this spot or a safety squeeze. Kyle has not bunted well this year. He's really struggled. He's just challenging him with 98, 99 miles an hour with that fastball. Kendrick is struck out. First strikeout for Martinez. And that'll bring Ben Revere to the plate. Now, if you're Ben here, would you think about laying a bump down? Well, possibly so, yeah. But. Um, it looks like you get the third baseman playing in, even with the bag to start. Taking it with you may not be. If Martinez falls off the mound. That to that side, pretty pretty good. You just hit the ball hard on the ground somewhere. He's got a real good chance if he hits the ball hard on the ground. Well, in the outfield, John Jay is as shallow as you'll see a center fielder against Ben Revere, shaded over toward left center. Holiday is also shallow, shaded over toward the left field line. One ball and one strike to Revere. Said the reason he hadn't played much because of that knee said that it was really hampering his speed game. But he was trying to get get himself back to for yesterday's ball game against Wainwright. Ryan Sandberg just felt like Mayberry uh, was swinging the bat well enough that he wanted to give him another chance. Revere is struck out back to back strikeouts for Martinez. So Cody Ashy's three run double. Has given the Phils the early lead. This fastball he just drove toward the alley in left center field. Pretty sweet swing. And the train just kept on moving.
7.05. The game is followed by the Xfinity Fireworks Show. Sunday at 1.35, the Rothman Institute, Dominic Brown jersey, free defense, 14 and under. You can get tickets by going to phillies.com. Well, Kyle Kendrick has a three-run lead to work with as we go to the bottom of the second, thanks to that guy right there, Cody Ashey. Yeah, Cody uh, just coming off his rehab assignment. Actually was swinging the bat quite well on his rehab assignment. And uh, continues to swing the bat well. I know uh, earlier in the series, uh, was his first game back, swung the bat very well, had nothing to show for it, but hit the ball hard three times. So yeah, he was robbed by Matt Adams a couple times over at first. First pitch to Alan Craig is outside, 1 0. It's good to see him get rewarded for a good swing. And it's nice to see ducks on the pond, right? Absolutely. Even though one was really painful. One ball and one strike. Out of play. Here at Bush Stadium, Kyle is three and two lifetime with an ERA of three point six nine. This is his sixth start, his eighth appearance overall. Chopper to third, Ashy charges. He's got it, has time. One out. Four up, four down, and Yadier Molina's coming up. Well, we've been uh, talking about the starting staff during this uh, road trip and how good they've been. They're averaging seven and a third innings. It includes A.J. Burnett's nine innings, his complete game the other night, and Roberto Hernandez's six innings against the Atlanta Braves. And Kyle Kendrick also part of that. He threw seven innings, two runs against the Atlanta Braves the other day. And Murph, we talked about uh, how important it was for Kyle to get off to a good start in that game. He's made some adjustments in his preparation for games. He has, Tom. You know, this is a situation we've seen time and time again with Kyle. The Phils get some early runs for him, and uh, he was in that habit of giving them right back. But uh, his last game against the Atlanta Braves, he did make some pregame adjustments. Uh, I asked him about that. He said that he went out for warm-ups about 10 minutes earlier than he normally does, and then he Got back into the dugout and kind of just rested. He went over the uh, the Cardinal or the Braves lineup uh, one more time just to get it in his head. But uh, he thought maybe he was a little bit too amped up when he would kept, was coming out in the first and second innings. Maybe the adrenaline was pumping a little much, so he wanted to give himself a little bit of time. He did that again today. We'll see if it pays uh, pays off for him. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Jamie, you know this better than anybody. You, you adjust as your career goes on. And sometimes you, know, you have issues like that that you have to sort of tinker with. Yep, it's most most definitely you're right Tom that does happen and you do have to have an awareness to it first and I'm sure Kyle has an awareness to it now it's a matter of what adjustment do I make and I know he's probably tried several adjustments and I don't think he really had one that really stood out for him except till the previous time in Atlanta where he sat down for a little bit and I, I really like that adjustment two. It looks like it's worked well for him two balls and two strikes to Molina. And he lines one out toward right field. Mayberry coming on, and he makes the shoestring grab. Two outs here are the seconds. It looked like he was indecisive as to whether he was going to play that one on, on a hop or go down and try to pull it off the top of the grass. It's a great effort by John. I think you're right, Tom. I think he thought maybe a sliding feet first or diving, and I think he was in between it until he finally said, I got to make a decision, and he did it. A great play. You know, it's not a bad chance to take up three nothing considering Molina's running. If for some reason it gets by him, it's probably not going to go all that far. And Molina, you know, he might get a triple out of that. You think so? Yeah. All right, well, then forget what I said. <laughs> Utley to his left throws out John Jay. Six up, six down for Kyle Kendrick here in St. Louis to begin this start. Nothing across. We'll go to the third. Phillies three, Cardinals nothing.
phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information. And please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, JB. Who was the first Cardinals manager to take his team to postseason in each of his first two full seasons? Answer will be revealed in just a little bit. It's a good managers here. That's going to be a tough one for you to decipher. Filter through. Top of the third. Jimmy Rollins will lead it off against Carlos Martinez. Rollins takes a strike. It's 0 1. Rollins lined out to right his first time up. Side. Back toward the middle, knocked down by Martinez. Yeah, there's one away. Not quite sure that you would teach your pitcher to throw the ball to first base that way. Well, we see some strange things, but I, I agree with you, particularly. Uh, with someone that potentially has the speed of Rollins. Now, Jimmy was moving down the first base line. Uh, if you're a pitcher at home, please don't watch this replay. Um, that's really not the way you teach somebody to throw the ball to first base. Catch the ball, gather up, turn your body, pro hop and throw, or move yeah. yourself over and underhand it either way, but. I would choose to crow hop and throw. I thought the throw the other day that Burnett had to second base. That's I mean that's the way you fire it. Yeah. Something was, like that. It, that was a great play. Utley back to the box. All right. So this time he leads Adams to the bag. Is that a little better? That's a lot better than whatever you want to call the first one. I, really, I can't believe how many comebackers the Cardinals pitchers have had this series. It's been easily over a half a dozen. We just saw two there. There was, uh, I think, Wainwright had four. Yeah. There's AJ Burnett. He had that comebacker back to the mound the other night where he turned a double play, a 1 6 3 double play. Ryan Howard is the batter. Howard singled his first time up and then came around to score on the double by Cody Ashey. Back toward the middle off the glove of Martinez picked up by Carpenter throws to first not in time. Another one back toward the box. And that'll be the second hit of the day for Howard. That one was hit quite hard. Yeah. Still had a chance to throw Howard out. But he was able to leg it out. Cardinal pitchers have had 10 1 to 3 putouts this series. Four game series, 10 1 3 putouts. That's, that's a considerable amount. Mayberry was hit by a pitch his first time up. That slider now, maybe it was geared up for the fastball, but that slider was up in the zone. That's where I think he runs into trouble, particularly against left handers, not too much righties, but left handers. So it comes back into their swing. To our right, out of play. Here's to Budweiser, here's to baseball. Town is known for a lot of things, but known more for their Budweiser than anything else. Swing it a miss. Now that was a good pitch. Third strikeout for Martinez. No runs, one hit, and one man left for the Phillies. We play two and a half. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Johnny Peralta will lead it off for the cards.
Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits over Pennsylvanians every day. Buy WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. And buy Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. 3 0 fills. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Well, out in the ballpark village, folks are well, watching themselves in the ballpark village. And also the Cardinals and the Phils game on the big screen. Over 300 people sit in that AT&T rooftop. And they are baking right now because it is hot. Temperatures again into the 90s today. It rained last night. There's pretty good thunderstorms coming through this area last night. Even this morning. That was my alarm clock. Thunder and lightning this morning. It almost knocked me off my bed. <laughs> Pitch to Peralta. That's in for a strike one and one. We were fortunate yesterday to, to get through that game without the thunderstorms because it was getting cloudy. That one just missed inside, and now it's two and one. I was curious about Rafael for call. I thought maybe we'd see him this series and just found out uh, he has a strained hamstring and went on the deal again today. Yeah, he's been playing second base for the Marlins. Over to third, off the glove of Ashy into shallow left field. A base hit, the first one of the game for the Cardinals. And under it as it leaked out toward left center field. I should say left field. Mark Ellis will be the hitter. Ellis hitting 189. He's 0 for 8 lifetime against Kyle Kendrick. He bunts foul. It's interesting. You bunt with the pitcher on deck. Runner at first. I have a feeling maybe if he gets on, they both get on and they might pitch hit for him. He's already got uh, 50 some pitches, 52 pitches. He's probably not going to get real much deeper in this game. They don't have somebody up, but I'm sure they could get, you know, if you get a couple guys on, they'd get up, you know, get somebody up quickly. Off the outer edge, one and one. Patrick trying to get the double play ball here. He has three ground ball outs so far. Three of the six. Third, that's a foul ball, and it's one ball and two strikes. Peralta goes back to first base. The Cardinals have hit it to 69 double plays on the year. To put it in perspective, the Phillies have hit it to 32, which is the least amount. And a called strike three. Was that the curveball? Or was that a changeup? I think it was a changeup. Pretty hard to be a curveball. 81 miles an hour. It was up. That's a changeup. Second strikeout. First down here in the third. And now Martinez. Now you figure Martinez is going to try to bunt Peralta up into scoring position. With one man down. Ex shortstop now. Well, there's a reason he's pitching. Though, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> he takes outside one and zero. You never know, Tom. Well, he was uh, 0 for five last year as a hitter, Carlos Martinez, and he's hitless this year and just three at bats.
bunts to the right side. And Howard will make the play. Up to second goes Peralta. Two outs here in the third. Now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. There's Matt Carpenter who grounded out to second. It is only time up. Have done a pretty good job this series keeping Matt Carpenter off base. Kid that's got uh, pretty good back control and good, very good at, I, I believe, very good plate discipline. Knows the strike zone, handles the bat well, gets on base, and is a catalyst for this offense. And they pitched him very well. No balls and one strike. He's been on base with two walks and two hit batsmen. He's also been on base once with a hit. He's not happy about that pitch right there, that cutter on the inner half. No balls and two strikes. Right, Sandberg was saying yesterday as we look at this pitch. Well, that's pretty close. It's actually a pretty good pitch. Yeah. He said yesterday back at fourth, he goes, the Cardinals were chirping at Larry Vanover and he'd adjust his strikes on a little bit. Then the Phillies were chirping at Larry Vanover and he'd adjust his strikes on a little bit. Ball left center field. Ben Revere is out there. And Kendrick will work around the leadoff infield single by Johnny Peralta. No runs, one hit, the first hit of the game for the Cardinals. We're a third of the way through. Dominic Brown will lead it off. She in the second have the early lead. Time now for our Geico quote of the day. Matt Carpenter, who just flied out to center field to end the bottom of the third, talking about his team's offensive struggles. I wouldn't say there's a single guy who is doing what they are capable of doing. There are some guys who are having good years, but is everybody doing what they usually do on a consistent basis? No. Matt Holiday, Alan Craig, and myself, are we 380 slugging hitters? No. But that's what's going on. That was part of that meeting yesterday around second base that we talked about. Where they're trying to collectively and individually change things. I think one of the big glaring issues for the Cardinals has been uh, their numbers with runners in scoring position this year. Now overall they're eighth in the league in hitting. They're having trouble scoring runs. Martinez makes a fine play to get Brown. There's one out here in the fourth. But they're you know, about 80 points down with runners in scoring position compared to last year. They're two for 19 with runners in scoring position in this series. 
Well, with the pitching that they're getting, the starting pitching that they're getting, you'd think they'd be, if you just looked at their starting pitching numbers, you would think they'd be running away with this division. But with their offense kind of in the middle of the pack and uh, you know, not driving runners in when they have them in scoring position, and that's, that's the telltale sign. Well, here's Cody Ashey, who is the star of the day right now. His three run double uh, earlier in the game has helped the Phils to this lead. He lines one out towards center, and Jay makes the catch. Two outs. That three run double by Ashey uh, is the first one of his big league career. First time that he's had an opportunity and has paid off by driving in three with a double. Here is that double. Just a fastball that's running away. Pretty hard fastball, about a 797 mile an hour fastball. And like I said, just getting the barrel to the zone with a guy throwing this hard, he generates most of the power. So you're creating the, the bad speed. Cameron Ruppo for one. Yeah. I think he calls that pitch a strike all day. The Phillies have no chance. That ball's below the zone. You got to chirp at him a little bit, Jamie. Then he'll yeah, I'm just I'm not allowed to do that from up here. Am I, Tom? <laughs> That's foul off to the right. Well, Larry's made a career out of it over in the radio booth. <laughs> you just have to pick your spots. You have to realize that I can't really hear you from up here. Swing and a miss. Side is retired. That was 100 miles an hour with that fastball, eight pitch hitting. Phillies lead it three nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Delaware Valley Honda dealer shop Honda.com by AT&T mobilizing your world and by Dodge visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. So these are up three nothing thanks to the three run double by Cody Ashy earlier in the game. Matt Holiday is going to lead things off for the Cardinals. It's time now for our Mazda leaders. You know, we talk about Holiday and he's among the Major League Baseball's hit leaders since 2006. Ichiro leads the way. Cabrera is right on his tail. Cabrera had another hit today. Robinson Cano, Adrian Gonzalez, and then Matt Holliday. As we've said in our pregame, you know, he's, he's been a big contributor you know, when he played in uh, Colorado and, and here in, in St. Louis. His offense is uh, the biggest part of his game. He's a very adequate left fielder um, with a very adequate arm, but what he can do offensively uh, in, in making a pitcher work, driving the ball to the ballpark, hitting to the situation, um, and just 
him in the lineup, wherever he's put in that lineup, and it's usually in the, the upper part of the lineup, it makes a big difference. Well, as we mentioned, when Pujols was here, he was kind of the protector of Pujols. And then Beltron was here, and he was combining with Beltron in the middle of the order. Now he's all these young guys, and he's the veteran. Kendrick's first pitch to him here in the bottom of the fourth, off the end of the bat foul, 1-1. I think he's gained the reputation of becoming a first ball swinger. I think the Phillies have pitched him that way just from watching these four games here. They've, they've pitched him that way. The first pitch usually isn't a fastball right down the middle. Well, that's the strike that uh, Rupp had called on him. At the top of the fourth, Kendrick comes right back with the sinker. And it's 0-2. Was the curve ball and it's one ball and two strikes. He'll throw that pitch the least amount the curve ball first one he's thrown today. Still good to throw it though. Was a strike. He's looking in, wishing that the whole plate umpire saw it the way he did. Holiday stays alive. Jimmy, you mentioned that uh, Holiday likes to swing at the first pitch. He has the sixth highest first pitch uh, percentage in Major League Baseball. Put in play or for hits? Just to put be put in play. Just swinging at yeah. first pitch. 42.9 percent. Two two pitch to him. He rips it. Foul. Yeah, and when you face a guy like that, you're, it's almost like you're facing him with somebody on base. Because you know his. His aggressiveness can get him out real quick. You know, he can get he can, I'm sure you know I'd be interested to see how many first pitch outs he's made in his career. Probably a fair amount. But I'll guarantee he's probably had more success off the first pitch than he has had failure. But yeah, he's a guy you go up and he comes to the plate and you say, all right, I gotta pitch to him like I've got like you know, like I've got guys on base. Over to third. As she backs up on it, made it a tougher play, slings it across the diamond in time. And there's one out. WB Mason has a midseason acquisition you can't pass up. During June, only get a Dymo LM 160 label maker for just $9.99. Visit WBMason.com and order yours now while supplies last. Well, there was a uh, a sense of indecision on Cody's part, and he almost played that into a uh, mistake. Yeah, Cody uh, he had a little bit of trouble with that earlier in the season as well. I think once you make your decision, you've got to, you know, it's almost like he was in between. Sometimes you get stuck in between like that, the ball takes a funny hop on you. He's conversing with Rollins about it right now. Well, he adjusted. He did a good job of adjusting too, because that was that was not an easy play as it turned out. One ball and one strike. It came up to him, and he had his body partially turned, and a lot, and he had time, but then he had to turn his whole, his body around again to make that throw across the diamond. Starts. As the ball was hit, he knew it was going to be to his left side. He just kind of turned his body into it and kind of waited for that ball to come to him. 
as they say in the infield, you know, you make your hops. So you've got to choose what you're going to do. If you're going to charge it, if you're going to wait for it, or if you're going to back up on it. But usually when you back up on a ball, there's some balls that you can back up on, but usually when you back up on the ball, it plays you. You don't play yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know if he saw it right away off the bat, which is why he did that. Well, that's possible too with the background here. A lot of people back behind don't play with white shirts on. One ball, two strikes to Adams. And it's two and two. Center field. That's well hit. Revere going back toward the wall. It is off the top of the wall and it gets away from Revere. Fortunately, Adams wasn't really moving and doesn't move all that well. But he's at second with a one out double. 17th double of the season for Adams. That ball was hit. I thought I had a chance to maybe to go out of the ballpark. It you got a backdoor cutter that stayed up a little bit, but it just looked like it kept looked like the ball kept carrying. I was trying to watch Ben as well. And at one point he just took off and headed to the wall. First extra base hit of the day for the Cardinals. Just their second hit against Kendrick. Alan Craig is the batter. He grounded out to Ashy his first time up. On a slow roller to third. Kendrick his last two starts has allowed one run and two runs so three runs in his last 13 innings of work. One ball one strike to Craig. That one was a little farther out than the last pitch so it's two and one. Carl's 10 outs thus far today has been. Uh, Four ground ball outs, five ground ball outs, three fly ball outs, two strikeouts. Try to get a pretty good rip at that pitch right there. He just missed that ball. His reaction, I think uh, he feels the same way. I think he needs either go something hard in here, running in on him, or uh, something soft down. Two balls, two strikes. They went soft down. It's three and two. Actually, what came back to me was in our highlight. Pre-game highlight he threw that sinker that ran in. He swung right over. Remember that? Yeah. In our pre-game yep. highlight. So you at a major league scoreboard. The first place Nationals are shutting out the Braves three nothing. Games at the top of the six. Nationals are two and seven this year against the Atlanta Braves. The second win was last night. Now the three-two pitch. And he fouls it off the glove of Ruff. I'm sure Kyle is well aware of who's on deck and Molina is a guy who's hard to strike out and does put the ball in play a lot. And getting a, a the second out here would be would be big for Kyle at, at this point of the game. Cameron Rupp out to chat with Kyle. Rupp's done a nice job today. 
his first few innings handling Kendrick. Looks like uh, Marlon and Buchanan, or David Buchanan, are having a nice conversation about hitting and pitching in the dugout. High ball four that'll put two on with one out. And here comes Yadier Molina. Yadier flight out to right his first time up. Nice play by John Mayberry. Track it down. All right, so the first real issue for Kendrick here this afternoon. Two on with one out. Rupp lays down some signs. Drop in front of Mayberry. The runners move up a base. So base is loaded with one out. And then John Jay is the batter. Adams had to wait just to make sure that Mayberry wasn't going to catch that ball. So that's why he had held up at third. John Jay hit one out toward Utley his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Well, there have been some key double plays by the Phillies during this series, during this road trip. And they could use one right here to keep this 3 0 lead. Jay is really bared down during his career with the bases loaded. Hitting over 360 in these spots. Outside, 1 0. Cardinals have shown throughout the series that they're going to be very aggressive early in the count. So it's really important for Cal to be, be, be making quality pitches right here. Well, he's missed to the same spot with these first two. Bob McClure lurking in the dugout. No time for a visit yet. But it's two balls and no strikes to John Jay. Phillies have frustrated the Cardinals all series long with runners in scoring position, trying to do it once again. And a line drive base it to right field. One run is in, being held at third is Alan Craig. It's a 3 1 ball game. An RBI single for John Jay. And the bases remain loaded for Johnny Peralta. Well, now Bob McClure is coming out to pay Kendrick a visit. Pitch was just left up in the zone there. Yeah, again, another cutter. Kyle's kind of fallen in love with that cutter. I haven't really seen too many off the body sinkers to the left handed hitter. Yeah, no two seamers. I agree with you on that. And that has proven at times to be a very good pitch for him. So it's a 3 1 ball game here in the fourth. Johnny Peralta reached on an infield hit his first time up off the glove of Cody Ashey at third. Actually, the ball wound up going into shallow left field. This rally began with a double by Matt Adams off the center field wall. center field a base hit. Rounding third, heading for home is Molina. That's going to tie the ball game up, and Howard can't get the ball out of his glove to get Jay at third. It's a 3-3 game, and the rally continues for the Cardinals.
A two run single for Johnny Peralta. He has 30 RBIs. And he's two for two. And they had Jay caught at third. It's like a sinker that's left on the plate. In her third of the plate. Hubby wanted to cut that ball off at second base because he knew that Jay was heading to third and they had a play there. So he's over at third. On first is Peralta. Mark Ellis is the batter. He struck out looking his first time up. Both Peralta and Molina's hits were, on, were first pitches. So again, we talked about them being aggressive early in the count. Today it's worked in their favor. Outside, 1 0. Open action. Mario Hollins is up for the Bills. Open is rested. Wonder what the Cardinals will do with their pitcher who's in the on deck circle if Ellis doesn't come through here and he has come through in limited times. Well, the runners at third with less than two outs. Bunt safety squeeze. That's going to get the run home. Ellis is tagged out. It's a 4 3 Cardinals lead. Three unassisted on the put out. And Martinez will bat here in the bottom of the fourth. That was a good bunt. Very good one. Actually, Kyle tried to throw that ball up and in. And uh, Ellis did a great job of squaring that ball up, getting the barrel of the ball, and just getting it down and bunting it to first base. Well, it's a little thing, uh, but the base hit by Peralta with Revere trying to get it home on the throw when they had Jay caught a third is a big deal right now because that's the fourth run. Martinez hits one back to the mound, barehanded by Kendrick. And the side is retired, but the Cardinals put a four spot on the board here at the bottom of the fourth inning. They send eight men to the plates. We'll go to the fifth. The Phillies now trail it by one with Kendrick due to lead it off.
who was the first Cardinals manager to take his team to the postseason in each of his first two full seasons. Now they've had some good ones here, obviously. Tony La Russa being you know, arguably the best. Yeah. I'd, Whitey Herzog. You know, I was racking my brain and I couldn't think of too many managers, so I was going to just today guess would we'll take Mike Matheny as my guess. Mike Matheny is correct. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Mike Matheny uh, took over for Tony La Russa. Didn't really have a whole lot of baseball coaching experience aside from coaching his kids. And did a, done a very nice job now in his third year here in St. Louis. Kedrick leads it off and takes low one ball and no strikes. Phillies down 4-3. There is bullpen action for the Cardinals. When it, you, you talk about Mike Matheny as a manager, I think he does things very simple. It's just play the game the way it's supposed to be played and really focus on fundamentals. And not only does he do that here with his, his team, this is what the Cardinal organization stresses as well. Nick Greenwood's the lefty warming up. And Kendrick is struck out. Molina drops the ball, but Kendrick walks away. Five strikeouts for Carlos Martinez. Let's check in with Murph. Murph. All right, thanks, Tom. Well, uh, the Phil's uh, working on trying to get the lead back in this game. And, uh, you know, it's been a good trend over the past couple of weeks what they've been able to do with run differential. If you take a look at these numbers, on June 1st, they'd been outscored 214 to 246. That's a negative 32 run differential. But since then, They've outscored, including uh, today, 79-72. They've outscored their opponent for a plus seven. So knocking that number down. And, you know, when you look at stats and you look at numbers, run differential is a biggie in terms of, uh, you know, wins and losses, obviously. So uh, it, it's good to see that number heading in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. You look at the success the Oakland A's have had to, yeah. this year. And the A's are <laughs> probably the, the prime example of what Murph's talking about for run differential. Yeah, they were a plus 90-something the last time I looked. Yeah. Yeah, they've been very good. They're 47 and 28. They lead the West in the American League. In fact, they have the best record in baseball. They've scored 383 runs. Two one is in there for strike. It's two balls and two strikes. A's are plus 136 coming into today. Plus seven's good, Murph, but uh, <laughs> plus 100 and something for anybody is very that's, good. That's pretty, pretty darn good. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Revere. Martinez has retired 10 of the last 11 batters. And Revere lines it out to short, caught by Peralta. Two away. Jimmy Rollins walk to the plate. Rollins is hitless of two at bats. He's lined out. He's grounded out. Well, the second inning when he threw 29 pitches, he allowed the three runs. The Phillies unfortunately left Cody Ashey over at third with less than two outs. Lifts it into foul territory on the first base side. Adams, the first baseman, is under it. Makes the catch. Sign is retired in order. Phillies are making it look easy for Carlos Martinez. Ever since the second, we'll go to the bottom of the fifth. It's 4 3, St. Louis.
Special playbook of good citizenship brought to you by Citizens Bank. Jamie, did you know that the Red Goes Green team can be seen at every Phillies home game collecting recyclable plastic and aluminum bottles throughout Citizens Bank Park? For more information on volunteering for the Red Goes Green team, visit phillies.com slash redgoesgreen. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal, and that's helping you bank better. Citizens Bank, good banking is good citizenship. Phillies ball girls are usually leading the charge for that Red Goes Green team. You'll see them tomorrow night when the Phils and the Marlins get underway. Game one of a four-game series. Ceremonies before the ball game honoring Jimmy Rollins. Matt Carpenter will lead it off against Kendrick here in the bottom of the fifth. All right, Kyle needs to settle back in here. Pretty easy first three innings, not so easy fourth inning. Fly ball to left field. And one out for Matt Holiday, who's over two. Justin DeFreitas starts the throw for the Phils in their bullpen. You would think uh, for Martinez for the Cardinals, his day is done. Greenwood starting to throw again for St. Louis, and the Phillies have Utley and Howard due to start at the top of the six. There's DeFreitas. Chirp it a little bit at the home plate umpire. That's no surprise. Is he a chirper? A little bit. We saw it happen a little bit yesterday too. Yeah. Larry Battle for the third base umpire today was the home plate umpire in yesterday's ball game. Neither team was all too pleased with Larry Venover's strike zone yesterday. Cole Hamels was not happy on several occasions. Ryan Sandberg said, you know, there was a period in the dugout where Cole and Carlos Ruiz were fairly demonstrative with each other. And Ryan Sandberg said that it was it was about the strike zone. Cole walked five yesterday and allowed five hits. Struck out eight. One two pitch. He's got him to bite after that curveball. It's two and two. Balls and two strikes. Trying to find that put away pitch to get Matt Holiday. Holiday's two for 20 lifetime against Kendrick. Got to the 0 for 2 today. Out towards center field. And Revere will put it away for the second out. 
fans, follow every Phillies game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv team the game of the day, and much more. Download on the App Store. Visit Phillies.com today. Warm day. You need some coverage. Pretty sharp hat for that little guy. Adams down the left field line. And it's 0 1. Adams started the rally in the fourth with the double. Well, you see what he does with the ball in. <clears throat> that's, you know, I'd let him hit that ball all day. That, that's a free strike. You know what his nickname is? I do not. Big City. <laughs> now the 0 2 pitch to him. Big City. Sends it a big way out towards center, but it's playable for Revere. And a 1 2 3 inning for Kyle Kendrick. So three fly balls, and Kendrick is through the fifth. We'll go to the sixth. Chase Utley, Ryan Howard, John Bayberry do up for the Phillies when we return. The all time hits leader for a franchise that has existed since 1883. Jimmy Rollins delivered his first hit in his major league debut and has delivered on cue for his team and the city of Philadelphia for 15 seasons. Among the leaders in almost every offensive category in Philly's history, Jimmy's baseball card on the back is overflowing with a career of offensive success. The hits torch has officially been passed for the Phillies and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross live fearless. Phillies will honor Jimmy Rollins prior to tomorrow's ball game against the Miami Marlins. First things first though the Phillies trail it by one. Here in St. Louis as we go to the top of the sixth inning and the Cardinals will bring Nick Greenwood in. Greenwood's only pitched in a couple of games. And he's on for Carlos Martinez. Hey, give Martinez credit. He struck out five over five innings. The way that second inning was going, I didn't think he'd last the third. Yeah, he uh, quickly found a slider, actually. And it's, it's pitched at uh, pregame when we were doing some research. Didn't find a whole lot of numbers on the slider. It said he threw a lot of curveballs, more so than the slider. Well, Cody Ashley's three run double was it for the Phils. So now the Cardinals go to their bullpen. 26 year old Nick Greenwood out of Kingston, Rhode Island. Yeah. There was a strike. It's 0 1. Former draft pick of the San Diego Padres back in 2009. Didn't make it to the big leagues with the Padres, but now makes it here. 
with the Cardinals. He was a starter and a reliever uh, during his minor league career, made 47 starts and 218 appearances overall. Ball two strikes. That lead struck out, one away. That's six strikeouts for Cardinals pitching. That's time now for the ATT fan photo of the game. Mary Ann Pasquella provides us with our shot of the afternoon. And thank you, Mary Ann. We appreciate that picture. Tweet your photo to hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Ryan Howard two for two. Let's see what Howard's done against left handers this year. Only 203. This guy was probably pretty nasty when he was in college at the University of Rhode Island. Just by his wind up alone. Throw strikes, he must be uncomfortable to pick up. Inside, two and one. Yeah, he's really quick with his delivery. And his fastballs are slightly below average, but for a lefty, he gets up there pretty quick, but he's breaking those sliders quite slow. Side three and two. It is Major League debut uh, the other day, relieving Martinez. And Martinez is spot start for Wainwright. And he got the win. In fact, he's the first Cardinals pitcher to debut, relief pitcher to debut with a victory since 1988. John Mayberry is the hitter. He's also very aggressive with all three of his pitches. Swing one and one. He is the uh, fifth Rhode Island Ram to make it to the major leagues. Did you play Rhode Island when you were at St. Joseph's? I did. We did. In the Atlantic 10. Yep. We still play them. The last uh, Ram to make it to the big leagues was Dave Stenhouse back in 64. A little bit of a drought for URI. One ball, one strike to Mayberry. Mayberry hits it out towards center field. Jay will get there. Two outs. Back to first goes Howard and Dominic Brown's coming up. Dominic 
Brown takes a swing at the first pitch and rolls it foul. It's 0 and 1. Dominic today is 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. Throughout the series, Carpenter at third base really plays off the line. The left handed hitters at the plate, more so than usual, I think, than your typical third baseman. I would agree with you on that, yeah. Popped him up, left side of the infield. Peralta, the shortstop, shading his eyes from the sun, makes the catch. And the side is retired. Scoreless hitting for Greenwood in relief of Carlos Martinez. Middle of the sixth, Cardinals lead it by one. Hey, visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. By Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1 800 Jeff now for an appointment. By Budweiser. Here's to Budweiser. Here's to baseball. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Warm afternoon here in St. Louis. Second day of summer. Philly's only with three hits today. They only have one hit since the second. And. They'll send Kyle Kendrick back to work here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Kendrick will face Alan Craig, Yadier Molina, and John Jay. Fred Bird was storming around the field with some of the other storm. What they call storm busters? I can't remember what they called them. But anyway, shooting shirts into the crowd. Out tip by Craig. It's 0 and 1. Craig is 0 for 1. He grounded a third. He walks. Pretty extensive at bat his last time up against Kendrick during that four run fourth. Going to be Kyle's last inning. He's due to bat in the bottom of the, or excuse me, the top of the seventh inning. Line drive, base hit it to left field. And a leadoff single for Alan Craig. The out of Molina is coming up. Well, I guess Yadier is out of the slump he was in here in the month of June. He was hitting under 200. And the Phillies arrived here in St. Louis. But he has four hits and ten at bats during this series. Got 
to run him out there every day. Jamie. He's not going to get a day off. I thought maybe he'd get a day off today. Yeah, I thought maybe too. But you're not going to get out of your slump sitting on the bench. Plus, he's a 335 career hitter against the Phillies. Yeah. one. Almost half of Kyle's pitches today have been cut fastballs. He really has gone away from the sinker today. More so than usual. And like I said earlier, you know, that throwing that sinker off the left hander's hip. I haven't seen that at all today. Now, the last time he pitched here in St. Louis was that complete game shutout in 2012. And that day, that two seamer was working pretty good. Foul territory down the right field line. Long run for everyone. It drops into no man's land. 0 oh 2 to Molina. Next Sunday, when the Phillies wrap up their series against the Atlanta Braves, all fans 14 and under, thanks to the folks at the Rothman Institute, receive the Dominic Brown jersey. Replica jersey. Tickets can be purchased anytime at Phillies.com. Would be the home jersey. See there on your screen. Lays off, it's one and two. Right side. This could be two, even though it's not hit that hard. There's one, and that's all they'll get. He's the throw pulled Rollins off the bag. He applies the tag. And there's one away. Fielder's choice for six on the put out. Yeah, you see uh, Molina takes an off balance swing. It's too hopper to chase. And chase actually, it didn't look like he got enough on it, and Jimmy's momentum kind of came. Jimmy kind of had a reach for that ball, and I think it actually took him off the bag. The timing wasn't quite there, right. so Jimmy was made sure that he got one out. Well, those guys have played more games together than any double play combination, active double play combination in baseball. And like they always say, usually one knows exactly what the other is going to do at all times. Balls one strike to John Jay. Out towards short. Off the glove of Rollins and everybody will be safe. It's going to wind up being the seventh error of the season for Rollins. The ball was hit hard. I guess I shouldn't assume they may give him a hit on that. The ball was hit hard. The cutter in the center of the plate. Jay is uh, gave him a base hit on that ball. It's hit very hard right at Jimmy. Actually, Jimmy's backhand kind of short hopped him. It's not an easy job to be an official scorer. That ball playing a double play depth got on him pretty quickly. That's a play that Jimmy would normally make. And it would be a double play. I think they could have easily given him an error on it, even though it was smoked. So first and second now they got to go after Peralta again who had two, uh, two run singles last time up. Outside one ball and no strikes. Trying to keep himself as dry as possible. He keeps wiping his hands and his arm. 
on his uniform top. Third, Ashy backs up on it, goes to second. He slipped, and they do get Jay. And there are two outs. Five four on the put out. Runners on first and third for Mark Ellis. Now that one, he kind of had it back up on it. The way the ball was hit, where he was playing. The ball looked like it had a lot of top spin to it. Kendrick needs to make a pitch here. Came up on him kind of like the other one did. But it was to the other side, to his backhand. He's fortunate that throw got to Udley because he slipped, his back foot slipped as he let go of that throw. Ellis had a safety squeeze his last time up, got an RBI. No time at bat. He's 0 for 1. Sam Freeman and other lefties in the bullpen. On first and third, two men down here in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, the 1 1 pitch coming from Kendrick. And the line drive, base hit it to right field. Another run scores. It's a 5 3 ball game. RBI single for Ellis, his second RBI of the day. Well, the potential double play that Molina hit into and the ball that John Jay hit haven't helped Kendrick in this inning. Now he trails it by two. This is fastball pretty much right down the middle. Up the middle of his quad. Mark Ellis doing what he does so well is hit the ball the other way. Earlier today, the Cardinals made a roster move. Colton Wong, their second baseman, was placed on the disabled list with a shoulder injury. He injured the, sh the shoulder uh, in a series against the Kansas City Royals, and he just wasn't getting uh, better. So they put him on the DL and they they brought up Shane Robinson and Robinson the speedster will be the pinch hitter uh, for St. Louis here in the sixth. Runners at first and third. First and second, excuse me. Robinson has been up here this year. He's a 152 hitter. Season in Triple A. Five ball to center field, better review. Side is retired, but the Cardinals tack on another run on an RBI single by Mark Ellis. They lead two. We'll go to the seventh inning here in St. Louis. 
Phillies down five to three. Time now for your local Honda dealers game summary. The Cardinals trailed at three nothing at one point, but then they put a four spot up against Kyle Kendrick in the fourth, added one more in the sixth inning. Cody Ashey gave the Phillies the early lead. With a three run double in the second. Johnny Peralta, a two run single. Mark Ellis has two RBIs. The guy at the bottom, Carlos Martinez, give him credit. He was all over the place the first couple innings, but then settled in. So now we go to the top of the seventh inning. The Phillies trail at 5 3. And back to the bullpen for the Cardinals. Sam Freeman, another lefty, who's pitched in 11 ball games so far, will face Cody Ashey. Delivers a strike. It'll be Ashy, Rupp, and then a pitch hitter for Kyle Kendrick. Fly ball, shallow center. John Jay makes the catch one out. That'll break camera and wrap up. It's time for the Major League Notebook. Murph, take it away. All right, thanks, Tom. Brought to you by Gwinnett Mercy University. And the San Diego Padres are shaking up their front office to missing their general manager today, uh, Josh Burns. The uh, team decided to put their future in someone else's hands or in a couple of different sets of hands. A.J. Hinch, Fred Ullman, and Omar Minaya, all who have been with the team, will take over and serve as acting general managers. And speaking of the Padres, guys, last night, uh, relief pitcher for the Padres in the eighth inning, Alex Torres, became the first major leaguer to wear the new protective cap. And there you see a look at it. It's a little strange looking. And he said he took some, some ribbing from some of the folks. But uh, he had a scare in uh, spring training with a line drive that whipped past his head. And he said, if it can help uh, protect my head, I'm going to wear it. So that's what he's doing, guys. I have to admit, Murph, the, the picture that you that we just showed, uh, it looks different than the hat we saw earlier this year in spring training. That is huge. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing, Tom. It's much bigger than yeah. the one we saw in spring training. Uh, it's, uh, it's. He said it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's a little bit heavier than a normal cap would be. There's that protective uh, lining inside. So, uh, you know, it's going to take a little getting used to. But, uh, you know, good for him. If he uh, feels like it's going to uh, help him and give him some peace of mind out there, then, then he should use it. One ball, two strikes to rub. Would you have ever used it, Jamie? I mean, I don't believe so. Yeah. Yeah, we, I, I can't remember where we saw the first one uh, earlier this spring, uh, but uh, I don't remember it looking that big. Inside, three and two to Rupp. By the way, the first part of uh, Merce's notebook with A.J. Hinch and Omar Minaya. There had been talk that Hinch could wind up on the field as Bud Black's replacement in the dugout. Rupp is struck out. And 
Cesar Hernandez will be brought up as a pinch hitter here in the top of the seventh inning. So Ryan Sandberg is going to go to his bullpen for the first time in the bottom half of the seventh. Cesar takes outside. It's one and zero. Mario Hollins well rested. Side corner. Now it's three and two. Hernandez taking two strikes. Cardinals bullpen has an ERA of 2.15 coming in to today's ball game in the month of June, which is second best in baseball. Line drive, base hit it to right field for Cesar Hernandez. So the tying run is coming to the plate for the Phils. Down 5 3 here in the top of the seventh inning. Cesar's done a really nice job here in the last week or so. Just kind of filling in. Yeah. Playing as a utility guy, pinch hitting. Average is up to 256. Cesar, he had a long way to go. All right, so instead of having Bird pinch hit here against the lefty, they decide to stay with Ben Revere, who does hit lefties fairly well. He takes a strike. It's 0-1. The Phillies have somewhat of a short bench today uh, because of Will Nieves' continued injury to that quad. As we said, he could probably hit if they needed him to, but they wanted to stay away from him. Pitch to Revere in the dirt. One ball, one strike. In there, one and two. If they had pinch hit Bird here, they could have moved Mayberry to center. One ball, two strikes. And the pitch coming to Ben Revere. Opposite way, backhanded by Peralta. In time, strong arm. Side is retired. No runs. One hit and one man left. Time to stretch here in St. Louis. Phillies trail the final game of this series by a score of five to three.
much. We appreciate that. Reminder that tomorrow the Phillies will open up their series against the Miami Marlins at 7:05 first pitch, and they will honor Jimmy Rollins becoming the all-time hits leader in Phillies history with a pregame ceremony. So we invite you to get to your seats by 6:45 tomorrow to enjoy that. Also, uh, all fans coming to the ballpark will receive a commemorative print. Order your tickets for the first game and every game on this homestand by going to Phillies.com. Heard Marshall say that he'll be along with Ben Davis for Phillies post game live coming up right after this ball game presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Murph, uh, did you uh, get a hold of Ben and let him know that you were in Sunblock 100 today? Yeah, Just Ben likes to make sure that I'm taking care of my my skin and yeah, I let him know. All yeah. right, that's good. My fellow Irishman is looking out for me. <laughs> Mario Hollins will commit for his 28th ball game. Hollins one and one a 2.55 ERA so he'll face the top of the order it'll be Matt Carpenter. JV, this is where I think the Phillies bullpen has excelled uh, at least over this uh, these last couple weeks particularly the month of June close ball game keep it close give the offense a chance with two more at bats. Yeah they've they've all kind of come into their own and brought their specialty to the bullpen and they've all contributed in their own way. A lot of these kids have a big fastball with a, a good slider. There was a point where they were being used a lot, but not recently. The starters have all gone at least six innings on this road trip in every game. Kendrick and Roberto Hernandez in two of their ball games only went six, but still, everybody else went seven or more. There's a strike. It's two and one. Oh, and that's going to happen during the course of the season. At times, they're going to feel like they're overworked, and then there's going to be times where they feel like they're underworked. Right. And as a bullpen guy, you have to figure out that happy medium to how to stay prepared for both of those types of situations. Two balls, one strike. Back toward the middle, and Utley can't get to it. A base hit for Carpenter. Just his second hit of the series. All right, time now for our Hyundai defensive play of the game, and we go go all the way back to the second inning. Jamie on this liner by Yadier Molina. Yadier Molina hits a sinking line drive, and John Knight Mayberry comes running in. Wasn't sure at first what he was going to do. Go feet first or head first. Chose the head first and turned it into our uh, defensive play of the game by Hyundai. At that point, Phillies had a uh, three nothing lead. Gibson's lost that lead. Carpenter goes. The pitch is a strike. Throw to second is in time. Boy, Cameron Ruff has a gun behind the plate. I mean, he got rid of that and it got there in a hurry. There's a ball that was up a little bit. It gives Cameron an easier chance to get out of his crouch, but boy, that play was uh, throw was right on the money. And uh, Carpenter slid right into the tag. It's in your own. I thought Carpenter got a really good jump, too. I mean, see how fast that ball got down to I second base? Yeah, yeah. Cameron had something on that ball. One ball, one strike to Holiday. Over to first. And there are two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Mario Hollins, a, a likable kid from the Oakland area. It was funny the other day, we were talking about pregame interviews with Larry Anderson, who does the radio interviews, postgame interviews. And Larry was trying to decide who he was going to talk to, and he's talked to Mario uh, a couple times already this year. Mario said anytime you want want somebody to do an interview anytime somebody doesn't do it and you're stuck he goes I'll do it. He likes the hundred dollar gift card you get for doing the free game interview. <laughs> he goes we'll talk about anything. He's a very knowledgeable kid. Two balls and one strike.
Steinbrenner over the head of Rollins, a base hit. Second hit of the inning for the Cards. Second hit of the game for Matt Adams. And Alan Craig is due up. The Freitas is ready if they want to use him. He's got Craig and then Yadier Molina. Two right handers. But Mario has been able to get both righties and lefties out, but here comes Ryan Sandberg. So that may be it for Mario Hollins. Rhino taking the slow walk out to the mound, and there's the signal to the pen. So the right hitter's coming in for the Phils. So pitching change with the rudder at first base, two men down here in the bottom of the seventh inning. We'll be back with Justin DeFreitas right after this. Saturday is photo day at Citizens Bank Park. It begins at 2.05. The game does. But prior to that ball game, you get a chance to get out on the field and take a picture of your favorite Phillies player. It's brought to you by Apple Vacations and presented by Now Resorts and Spas. All fans coming to the ballpark receive a 2014 print. Make your plans. Come out early for photo day. Order tickets at phillies.com. Justin DeFreitas is the new pitcher for the Phillies. Your last look from the brew house out in left center field. So the camera sits. Get in at Bush Stadium. The Fred has 15 strikeouts in 17 innings. The opposition hitting just 197 against him. So that puts runners on first and second with two men down. Alan Craig has been on base three times today for the Cardinals. And now Yadier Molina. Bullpen here in the month of June, third in Major League Baseball with a 2.49 ERA. Seattle leads the way. Then the Cardinals, then the Phils, then the Cubs. Cubs actually uh, 
have the third most innings. That's not surprising for a bullpen in Major League Baseball. In the dirt, 2 0. Let's see where they are at the end of the season. That'll be the telltale sign, Ken. Mariners 1.92 here in the month of June. The opposition hitting 193. For the Phillies, the opposition was hitting 165 coming into today in the month of June. It's pretty good. Cool. Two old pitch. Tell you the Major League scoreboard. In Washington, it's gone final. The Nationals have defeated the Braves four to one. So Washington's lead in the East is a game and a half over Atlanta. Two and a half over the Marlins. Four and a half over the Phillies and five over the New York Mets. Two and two to Yadier Molina. Over to third, and Ashy's got it. Sets and makes the long throw, not in time. Good try by, good job by Howard to come off the bag. That'll be a hit, an infield hit for Yadier Molina. Uh, the bases are now loaded for John Jay. And this ball takes Cody back off the back of the infield. He can't get his feet set to make a throw. And that surely would have won, been one long throw yeah. to throw even Molina out at first base. He probably should have just eaten it. Howard was able to come over and smother it. Here's Jay up for the second time today with the bases loaded. He had an RBI single in the fourth with the bases loaded. Yeah. One one to Jay. So far today, Jay's been an early count swinger. You need to be very careful here with him. Off the hands down the left field line. Foul. Oh and two. The 0-2 pitch coming to Jay. They went upstairs. He didn't bite. It's a big out here for the Phillies and DeFreitas. This base hit here really kind of opens the game up. In and out right here. Kind of keeps it in reach here. Mm -hmm. Phillies uh, all they need is a base runner to get back into this game. In the dirt, Rupp blocks it, keeps Adams over at third. Good job. And it's two and two. The slider in the dirt, Rupp does a great job getting his body in front of that, and letting that ball just come off his chest and keeps it right in front of him. And then the runners can advance. And Adams, as big as he is, he looked like he had a chance. Looked, he was like he was thinking about trying to take home. And he definitely was. Had a good secondary lead. The 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. 
Justin DeFreitas works himself into a little bit of trouble here in the seventh inning, but then gets right on out of it. He leaves him loaded. We'll leave for the eighth inning. Jimmy Rollins due to start things off for the Phils. Baseball is brought to you by Nissan. Get to your local Nissan store for the ride of your life and save big today. Buy McDonald's any size hot or iced coffee is just one dollar. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And buy the Quality Plus Ford stores. Well, top of the eighth inning, the Phillies down 5-3. As Jimmy mentioned, they get a base runner. That means the tying run is coming to the plate. That's a good giveaways here this weekend at Bush Stadium. Today was hat day. Cardinals hat, the blue one with the red brim. The gentleman's wearing right there. Given out. Now the Philly fans may have gotten it when they walked in, but they're not wearing them. But the uh, Cardinals hat has the World Series logo on the side. They have the Bob Gibson jersey they gave out the other night. We begin the top of the eighth. Rollins will lead it off against Freeman. And it's 0-1. Hit it 15 straight games, but is hitless today. Breaking ball, it's one and two. with a short Peralta throws high and Rollins is safe at first off the glove of Adams Peralta's eighth error of the season so the Phillies have a base runner and it does mean the tying run is coming to the plate sharply hit ball Peralta has plenty of time he's got underneath it and Airmailed it. That's a big first baseman too that he overthrew. Adams got up there though. You can see when he threw it, his hand was underneath the ball and he yeah. just kind of pushed it over there. Hopefully that's the break the Phillies needed. Yep, they're only down by two. The Phillies haven't had many opportunities since they scored the three runs in the second. They haven't put a runner in scoring position since. As Utley takes upstairs, one and zero. He's 0 for 3. He's fly to left. He's grounded out. He struck out his last time up. Lee Shack is now warming for the Cardinals. One ball and one strike. Giles warming for the Phils. 
interesting today the Cardinals have given Chase a steady diet of fastballs. A couple of changeups. Everything else has been a fastball. You wouldn't think that. You would not think that at all. Well, they've held him in check. He is over three. There you go again. Two and one. Just interesting how different clubs pitch to, to the Phillies hitters. I think it's interesting from that standpoint and also the way they align their defense. Now with Howard, it's normally the same general line, but for others, it's different from team to team. Swing and a miss, two and two. And it's there that you can make a quality pitch with a breaking ball after he's seen so many fastballs. You save those opportunities to make the secondary pitch because he has seen so many fastballs today. Ground ball foul. out today. And now Ryan Howard's coming up. You see him tripled up on the breaking ball. That would seem a little bit better location. Almost a little bit slower. Howard's going to have a little trouble with Freeman's motion here. Up it in 1 and 0. Freeman is from Carrollton, Texas. He went to the University of Kansas. Second round selection by the Cardinals. Baseball terms, I guess you wouldn't consider him young. He's 20, almost 27 years old. But I would say, looking at left handed pitchers, I really do believe they mature a little bit later. Balls right there. Now he's got him set up for that same pitch that he got Utley with. One ball and two strikes. Well, he's down two. Tying runs at the plate. They're in the top of the eighth. That was a curveball that didn't that didn't break. You get lucky there. Ryan does have two hits today. He's walked the other time. He is two. The Phillies only have four overall. Swing and a miss. He got back-to-back -back strikeouts. Charles Barkley is one of the most controversial, outspoken, and dominating players in the history of the National Basketball Association. Tomorrow at 5, find out what he thinks of the Sixers in the upcoming NBA draft. Live on Philly Sports Talk, presented by Comcast Business on Comcast Sportsnet. Freeman is done after an inning in two thirds. We'll get a nice round of applause. He's been very effective. Now Nishak's on to face John Mayberry.
He's down 5-3, and they've got the tying run coming to the plate. And it's John Mayberry who'll have to face Pat Nishak. 35th game for Nishak. And he's 1 0 with a 0 0.89 ERA. And he's averaging a strikeout per inning. He's only allowed 14 hits. I think because he's so funky. You know, I mean, he's, he's a little different than what we're used to seeing from a right handed relief pitcher. Looks like the ball gets on you pretty quick. Nishak last year pitched with the Oakland A's. He had an ERA of 3.35. He pitched in 45 games. Signed as a free agent in February of this year with the Cardinals. What a pickup he's been. Avery takes inside. One ball, no strikes. This kind of a pitcher. He was an over the top pitcher when he was in high school, but it was toward the end of high school when he switched uh, to being this style of pitcher. Went on to Butler University. He's a bulldog. One ball, one strike to Mayberry. Popped him up foul out of play. You don't see guys that throw from down here have the velocity that he has. That was a 90 mile an hour yep. fastball. They usually rely on a lot of movement or a funky delivery. And he's got the funky delivery. He's got a pretty good fastball. Got John Mayberry on strike. So three straight strikeouts for the Cardinals bullpen. The Cardinals bullpen now has five strikeouts, 10 overall. We'll go to the middle of the eighth at a 5 3 game. Phillies post game live. Ben Davis is going to break this baby down. The Phillies losing, they're trailing at five to three here at the bottom of the eighth inning. It's presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Again, it's Phillies post game live. It's coming up at the conclusion of this ball game. Got some soccer going on in the background. Cardinals lead at five three. That's the Algeria Korea match, Jamie. I don't know who you had in that one, but Algeria is running away with it. Teddy Giles will take over. Who were the scorers in that game? <laughs> I was making it up before when I was throwing <laughs> it out there. Teddy Giles in his fourth game, six strikeouts and three and a third. 
Giles on in relief of Justin DeFreitas. Trying to give the Phils a ray of hope. Peralta takes low. It's one ball and no strikes. Peralta has two hits today, two RBIs. Stairs 2 and 0. In a couple of games here at the big league level. And his command has been good. Now he's fallen behind 3 0 here to Peralta. And that one missed. And Giles looks like he's hurt. Looks like he got his, his spike caught out on the mound. And Sean Ficasney, the Phillies athletic trainer, is going to come out. Like it slipped a little bit, but then I think it might have been the back foot. No, it was the lead foot. Did it look like it slipped yeah, a little bit? It looked like he, he tried to plan and it kept right on going. He's going to fire some pitches. Nodding yes, so it looks like he's okay. They're going to let him go, continue on. So, runner aboard here in the eighth inning, and Mark Ellis will be the batter. Let's see what they do here with Ellis. You know, they want to get that extra run, and they've got a pinch hitter in the on deck circle. I would think Ellis is up here to bunt, Jamie, don't you? I would agree 100%. He's not hitting for big average. He's not getting in a lot of opportunity to play, but fundamentally a pretty sound baseball player. Yeah, yesterday there were a couple of occasions where both teams could have used the bunt. There's Daniel Descalso in the on deck circle. It's five in a row out of the strike zone, but they decided not to. The Phillies had two occasions where they could have bunted one with Mayberry up, one with Ruiz up. And the Cardinals had an occasion where they could have with Alan Craig at the plate. Runner goes, pitch is swung out of miss. The throw to second is in time. So Cameron Rupp has gunned down two. And yeah, there's one out. Cameron's in the ball awfully well behind the plate. Pitcher's given him. A chance to throw them out. That helps too. One thing they used, to, they raved about with Cameron uh, last year uh, was his setup behind the plate, where he, the way he received the ball. I don't know if you picked up anything today on how he's been receiving the ball. I think he, he gives a good target. I do know that. Looks like he has really soft hands. And I really love when a catcher gives a target, keeps his glove here the whole time so you can look at the glove. They talked about it. He doesn't jab it at balls. Right. And that's where the soft hands come into play. Two balls, two strikes. Late on the 97 mile an hour fastball, and it remains two and two. You know, and I'm thinking, geez, if I'm a catcher and somebody says I have soft hands, and I get to catch a 97 mile an hour fastball, it's got to be. <laughs> it, to me, it almost seems like an oxymoron. <laughs> so there you go. It kept it right there. It's a called strike three. Ellis thought that pitch was up. You heard Angel Campos. I think you heard it say it's not up. You 
see a slider it might be at the top of the zone but look how Cameron catches it and just holds it there for the umpire to take a good look see just showing it to him two outs and Descalso is coming up as a pinch hitter hitting just a buck seventy nine Trevor Rosenthal's warming up in the bullpen for the Cardinals the closer. That coveted 100 miles an hour since uh, his first appearance. He's still in the high 90s, though. I think there was a little adrenaline going in uh, that first appearance. Not that there, there was. Not that there isn't now. But your first major league toss. Council's not close to the fastball yet. He's fouled off a, a couple of them over the Phillies dugout. And a called strike three. A slider on the inside part of the plate. And the side is retired. Good job by Giles after the leadoff walk. Couple strikeouts. Trevor Rosenthal's coming on for the top of the ninth. Camps enroll your campers today. Receive fitness tips and booklets, posters, and the chance for a fitness visit. A school version of the program is available beginning in late August. Go to phillies.com slash fitness P H I T N E S S for more information. Cardinals five, Phillies three. Phillies are five and one right now on this road trip. Murph, they're trying to make it six and one before they head home to take on the Marlins. Yeah, one last shot for them, and then uh, as you said, their Phillies will be heading home to take on the Marlins for a four-game set starting on Monday. Here's your pitching matchups: Roberto Hernandez uh, and Nathan Evaldi going on Monday. David Buchanan uh, and Andrew Heaney on Tuesday. Burnett versus Alvarez on Wednesday, and then Cole Hamels will get the start on Thursday versus Tom Kohler. All right. Well, Haney's their top prospect. He'll pitch in game two, as Murph said. So now Rosenthal, and he gets uh, Brown to foul the first pitch back. It's 0 and 1. Rosenthal with 21 saves and 24 opportunities. He has allowed base runners 45 and 35 innings of work. I think if Murph tried a little harder, he could have caught that foul ball that Dominic just hit toward Bob McClure. Outside, one and two. Cardinals uh, are looking for their first win when trailing by three or more runs since April 8th. Two 
balls, two strikes to Dominic Brown. Dominic grounds it to second base. One out. We need a base runner to bring the tying run to the plate. It'll be Ashy, then Ruiz. Carlos is in the on deck circle. It looks a little bit like when Rosenthal's up and away right there to Dominic. It looked like he was kind of what we call running through his mechanics. He picks his leg up and he's already going to home plate. He's got nothing left but arm and body's way ahead of his arm and all he's got left. You know just his arm to throw and he's underneath the ball and pushes the ball to home plate. Right. Right. I guess it's why. He's not what you would consider lights out as a closer. He's got very good stuff when he's right. That's pretty nasty right there. 97 at the knees down on the way. Well, the Phillies have had just two hits since Ashy's three run double in the second. Ashy pulls it through the hole on the right side of base hit and the tying run is coming to the plate. Ruiz he'll pinch it Marlon Bird is in the on deck circle. So Ruiz pinch hits for Rupp. Bird is in the on deck circle to pinch it for the pitcher. There's Marlon. Numbers as a pinch hitter, he doesn't get a chance to do it that often. Oh, and two. Yeah. Didn't look comfortable at all against the two left handers, but now with the righty in the box, he's fired two pitches in the same spot. Pretty close pitch right there. I don't know how you don't swing at that pitch. <laughs> One ball, two strikes to Ruiz. And Carlos lifts it to right. Craig on the run and can't hang on. It's not a whole lot of room out there. And the wall, even though it's it's small in height, it's imposing. As you get over there as an outfielder. Well, you see a lot of guys when they get to the wall, they can't stop and they hit their knees on the wall. We saw that with Ben in, in Atlanta with the center field wall, hit his knee and was out for a couple days. Even though there's padding there, there's cement behind that padding. And that's not forgiving. Carlos tried to check, he went around. This is the home plate up fire, two outs. And Marlon Bird will be the pinch hitter for the Phillies. The Phillies won five in a row to start this road trip. Lost yesterday. Tough game. They trail this one 5 3. They've made up a lot of ground, they've done some great work. They still today talked about finishing up this road trip with six wins instead of five and carry some momentum into the homestand where they need to start playing better. No balls, one strike to Bird. Runner goes, pitch is taken outside, and Ashley will get to second without a throw.
No stolen base. They call it defensive indifference. Marlin fights it off, and it'll be over the dugout and out of play. Two strikes to Bird and the pitch. Another pop up. 98 on that fastball. You got a big arm. Surprise with something other than a fastball. Well, he really threw the ball well for the Cardinals last year in the World Series. Yeah, they had a lot of young pitchers coming out of that bullpen. Two balls, two strikes to Bird. And Marlin lines it out towards second. Ellis makes the catch, and the ball game is over. The Phillies will settle for a split of this four game series against the Cardinals. In the ninth inning, no runs, one hit, and one man left. They finished the road trip with a five and two record. It was a very good road trip for the Phillies. Johnny Peralta had a two run single. Earlier in the ball game, he was two for three with a walk in two RBIs, and he is the Chevrolet player of the game. Oh, w Mason deliveries of the game back in the fourth inning. The Cardinals down three nothing. Put a four spot on the board, Jamie. John Jay gets a big hit here uh, to keep the line moving, and then Peralta comes up with another hit, and then the safety safety squeeze here by Ellis. And they did all the little things here to allow them to put themselves back ahead, and those are our delivery WB Mason deliveries of the game. So that led to the Cardinals' 5-3 victory. Five runs on 12 hits for St. Louis. Three runs on five hits for the Phillies. So the Phillies set up for a split this four game series. Not a bad road trip. We'll be back to wrap it up one more time right after this.